breaking news. San Antonio Spurs star Victor Wembanyama will be out for the remainder of the season after being diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis, which is a blood clot in his right shoulder. In Victor's situation, it happened in a vein. Many of you might be familiar with blood clots that happen in arteries, and when that occurs and it happens, say, in the brain, it's a stroke. This is not a stroke. Hello, my name is Dr. Atom Sarkar. I'm a neurosurgeon and a neuroscientist, and we're here today again to talk about discussions that have to do with popular culture, the intersection of things like sports, medicine, and in particular, those things that relate to neuroscience. For those of you that live in Philadelphia, the Eagles have now successfully brought home a championship, and I think we can all exhale and start thinking about other things that are going on in the world. And one of the things that's going on in the world happened in the NBA. It looks like the San Antonio Spurs 48 hours ago announced that their star, their international star, Victor Wembeyama, is now out for the whole season. Now, for many of you, you'd say, oh my gosh, a 22-year-old kid who's out with an injury, what happened? It's a little bit more nuanced than that. So Victor was diagnosed with a blood clot. And a blood clot might mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but I'd like to unpack a little bit of that. I think a lot of us understand our skin, a lot of us understand bones and muscles, but all of us may not understand what our circulatory system does. That's our blood highway. And I do link it to a highway because I think it's easy for you to understand what happens on a highway or a roadway. Our blood system, without getting too wonky, is divided into two different sides. We have arteries that take oxygenated blood to all the different organs like the brain and everywhere else. And we have veins that bring the blood back to be replenished, to be given new oxygen, and also to be redistributed so we can have this orderly progression, heartbeat after heartbeat, of a constant supply. The arteries come from the heart and go to what we call the periphery. The veins then capture that blood and bring it back to the heart. There's an orderly progression of how we have larger arteries leading to smaller arteries, leading to even smaller arteries that then get collected by small veins that lead into bigger veins that lead into even bigger veins. And this is a very, very orderly system. Think about like when you drive your car, you drive out of your parking lot or your garage, and then you get onto your local street, and then you get onto your bigger street, and then you get onto the interstate, and then you go the opposite way to get back. This orderly progression is absolutely critical. Now, what happened to Victor, we, I will say, we don't know specifically, and that's because it's his medical health information and we don't have access to that, nor should we. But blood clots can happen in a lot of different settings. None of these are settings that I'm absolutely suggesting have happened, but I'd like to go through a wide range of them. For instance, if you have a blood clot, it can happen in a vein or an artery. In Victor's situation, it happened in a vein. Many of you might be familiar with blood clots that happen in arteries, and when that occurs and it happens, say, in the brain, it's a stroke. This is not a stroke. There is a very, very unique situation in where that could occur, and we can talk about that later, perhaps. Why do blood clots occur? Blood clots can occur for a lot of different reasons. Some of the reasons can be trauma. Some of the reasons can be genetic. For instance, there are some people that have a preponderance of a situation where their blood tends to clot more frequently than, say, the normal population. And keep in mind, Blood clotting is a very, very normal thing. If our blood doesn't clot, we'll have a problem. Every time we bang against a table, every time we skin our knee, there would be bleeding that would then not quell and we would literally lose all of our blood. So blood clotting is a mechanism that's absolutely important. It's when it happens in situations where we would say is unusual where it becomes problematic. Oftentimes in the hospital setting, we'll see young women who are on oral birth control that are also smokers, and those three things are very high risk for blood clots. Victor is obviously not a young woman. He's uh, 
<laughs> presumably not on birth control, and I doubt that he's smoking, so those are not the reasons for him. His reasons are more likely something that's intrinsic to his overall genetic makeup, or it could even be something that has to do with the nature of his profession. The repetitive motion could create a trauma in that vessel. But I think we should also keep in mind so many people, whether they're professionals or just amateur weekend warriors, play basketball. And we don't hear about these blood clots that frequently. So I would say that it's probably not necessarily from trauma, but perhaps there's something in his makeup of the proteins that help Victor clot that may be somewhat, say, aberrant that caused this to happen. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that we really don't have a good sense of how many people have blood clots. Oftentimes the symptoms are very subtle and we don't even realize it. In some situations where there's swelling or there's painfulness, those are more readily acknowledged and you can say, oh, here's a blood clot. It's causing swelling because blood isn't flowing and it's causing pain, and that's a very easy way to diagnose it. Many times it's just very subtle, and I think that in that situation, Victor's very fortunate that he has a medical team that looks after him so closely and that the Spurs were able to detect this. Blood clots can happen in any vein, and in particular for Victor, his situation is called a deep venous thrombosis. And I highlight the word deep because deep has a very, very specific implication here. I was telling you about the highway or the map of the way blood flows, how big vessels go to small vessels, go to even smaller vessels, and then the blood gets collected and it goes from small veins into bigger veins into even bigger veins. When there is a clot in a small vein, it probably doesn't even matter. But when there is a clot in a deep vein, the deep veins are large, and so the magnitude of that clot can actually impact somebody clinically. And what do I mean by that? Well, blood flows, and it flows back to the heart, and blood flows through the lungs. And whether you think about the lungs uh, in a way where they're for aeration and oxygenation, which is probably the right way of thinking about them, or if you think of lungs as a filter, a filter that can capture things such as a blood clot. And so if you have a large clot and it gets captured by your lung, it could create and lead to problems where you just can't breathe. Maybe even more importantly, where you can't oxygenate the blood that you have coming back from the rest of your body that needs to go back out. And that can be a serious life-threatening situation. Sometimes these are dealt with just by watchful waiting. Sometimes these are dealt with by surgeries. And always these are dealt with by using medication. Now, of course, if you know what the offending problem is, you're going to stop the offending problem. For instance, and again, this is not Victor's situation, but if you were a smoker, people would say, hey, Victor, you're going to have to stop smoking. Since we don't know exactly what it is, it's hard to know whether it's from his repetitive sort of nature of his basketball uh, profession, or if it has to do something more with his own inherent molecular genetics and clotting cascade. I think we're left a little bit to speculate, but no matter what, I think what's going to happen is Victor's probably going to be on some kind of blood thinning agent and that agent will likely be used for three to six months and the team will follow him with a series of studies there are really sophisticated studies called cat scan angiograms and that might be a way of looking at this there are other studies such as ultrasound which are really kind of low tech but very very effective and efficient but in any situation the Spurs and Victor are going to make sure that they follow this to make sure that the blood clot doesn't propagate, doesn't get bigger, and therefore doesn't create a problem in the lungs for Victor in terms of his ability to oxygenate himself. There's a really, really devastating neurological consequence to blood clots. So I said that strokes happen when there's a blood clot that happens in an artery. 
Victor's situation is not an artery, it's a vein. And this might be getting a little bit into the weeds, but when blood comes into your heart, it then goes to your lungs, comes back from your lungs, and gets pumped out by your heart. Some people have an unusual situation, which is called a septal defect. That means that there's a hole in the wall of the heart, and the right chamber and the left chamber, the receiving chamber of the heart on the right, and the ejecting chamber of the heart on the left can mix. And in those situations, the lung, that's that wonderful filter, is now taken out of the equation. And sometimes if you do have a blood clot that breaks off and goes into the right heart, it can pass over into the left heart. And then it could cause a problem in an artery and it could cause something that's akin to a stroke. I don't think that's the situation here. I don't think that's what Victor has to worry about. But that's just another way of pointing out to you that even though it might be something that happened in his upper arm and his shoulder, there could still be neurological consequences. And that's why here at Global Neuroscience, we're gonna talk about these issues and show to you how it matters, whether it's in the social media realm, whether it's in uh, sports realm, or how it's going to relate back to the brain. So if you've got other questions that have to do with sports or politics or just popular culture and want to know how there might be a connection to the brain or even the spine, why don't you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and let us know what you'd like to hear about next. And if you'd like to know more about what we do in our day-to-day, -day, which is actually being physicians, please head over to our Global Neurosciences website where you can see the litany of things that we do to keep your brain and your spine healthy. We'll see you soon.